What we're looking at here today, guys, is the new remote thermostat I've set up on my router. I put the thermostat unit itself into the controller, and it links to my Gecko G540, and will automatically trigger the emergency stop if things aren't right. So I'm going to turn it on to start with, and I've removed the sensor. This simulates if the plug falls out. It's gone into a, an error state, and you can see here that the fault light is on on the gecko. Right, I've now plugged the sensor in, and I'll turn the unit on again. It's come up in a fault condition, but as soon as it starts reading a uh, reading from the sensor. The gecko comes out of an emergency stop and the uh, gecko is ready to run. Right, I've just unplugged the sensor. You can see it's cut with a, a really strange reading. But if I leave it like that, if, if my cable breaks or what have you, if I leave it like that, within 60 seconds, the unit will have gone into an error condition again and tripped the emergency stop. And there we have it. Error again. Emergency tri stop tripped on the gecko. And the ro really annoying little alarm goes off. So that we know it is, uh, has an error. If I plug the sensor back in within about 60 seconds. It will have gone back and start running correctly again. Here we go, we're now getting a temperature sensor reading and the geckos come out of fault condition. This is going to be very handy because the same wire that has the temperature sensor in it also feeds power to my external fans on the router. So if that cable fails, then I'm going to, uh, it's going to st shut the whole thing down. Now what we're looking at here is the temperature sensor. At the moment it's just tucked in here but it will be cable tied hard up and against the router itself. But there's the remote sensor there. It wires up to the top of my fan units here. So I have a cable coming from the controller here that feeds my 12 volts to these two fans and also brings the sensor signal back down to the temperature controller. Right, next we're going to take this through a typical startup sequence. We power up the controller, sensor comes up, and as soon as it's ready, the emergency stop is disabled, and away we go. Now, we still have our emergency stop button, which I can activate as necessary. Now I'm just going to use my hand to warm the sensor up. I've just set it to 22 degrees. So I'm just going to hold on to the sensor now. So pretending we're doing a bit of cutting here and the temperature of the router is starting to rise. I can set whatever temperature I want on the thermostat. And when it gets to 22 degrees, there we go. 22 degrees immediately it trips. Now when I'm running it with a Super PID as I intend doing, that will also stop the spindle. And it will not be able to restart even when the gecko comes out of the fault condition. Now the other thing to note is it will not come out of fault condition until it's 0.3 of a degree below the temperature that I set. So I set for 22, it won't get until, uh, come out until it's 21.7. 21.9, it's neither heating nor cooling now. 21.7, well it's gone to 21.6, and we've come out of fault condition. So I'm thinking this will be a good way of keeping track that the fans I'm using for cooling, since they're now external, are running. And it should also 
um, stop any issues should the, the uh, spindle start overheating. Okay, well I hope that's been useful and uh, the next video on the router spindle will be when I do the uh, Super PID install.